Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to this tutorial to making some money in Tank Tycoon. One of the first things that you'll want to do is make sure that you don't spend all your money at once, because the game gives you ample opportunity to do so. You have every building that has facilities. Maintenance offices, fire stations, medical stations. Now some of these are very useful. Some of them are a bit of a waste of money. The ones that you do want to have are the fire station. With this, you have a lesser chance of catching fire during, for example, building of tanks. So make sure that you get the fire station and potentially also the maintenance office because it reduces the cost of buildings the problem is, it does cost a pretty penny all by itself. That's 30k. This is optional, I would say. The other one you can get are medical stations. Now, I have never really had an injury in my career as a tank tycoon, but it is something that can happen, and the game tends to recommend that you build this. For now, I'm going to forgo this. Now, what we need to do is sell tanks. So let's head over to the design bureau, and over here, design our first tank. At the moment, you don't have any tanks, so we're going to have to create a design. You want to have something that is pretty bare bones. So let's make the Mark 1 Mark 1. It is Mark 1 Mark 1 because it's the, let's say, the first alteration of this tank. Now, over here we have the, the tank. Uh, this is the hull. You're going to have to add an engine. We're going to have to add some tracks. This also adds up to either sponsons, which are those parts that allow you to add guns, or you can just have armored plates. If you do have just armored plates here, you can have one machine gun sticking at the front, but that'll be about it. Meaning that one of your stats, and you can see those on the right hand side, the stat that is called firepower hard is null and void. There is no firepower hard. Firepower hard is basically what the gun current, or sorry, what the game currently calls big guns. So in this case, you can have the Hotchkiss QF6 Pounder, but only if you add those sponsons. Now I'm going to make this thing into the, let's say the basic tank, as you might know it from World War I. There are some things, however, that I don't quite like, such as these additional wheels. They tend to make the tank heavier, and while they do offer you some additional bonuses, such as the ability to cross trenches, I don't want them on this tank. I want to have this tank as cheaply as possible. So this one has been completed. I'm going to make a copy. This draft is now going to be open to engineering. So if you click over here, edit in engineering and make sure that you do save the design, you're going to get taken over to the engineering department. And over here, you can edit the parts of the hull. Now these all need to be addressed if and when you have them, because some of them like the site, you simply don't have better iron, Better armor, that is, for the alloys. Sorry, not researched here yet. Same for assembly type. Skip most of these. The only ones that I currently really want to address are the tail wheel, which I do not want, and I don't want the roof. We're going to make this tank as cheap as possible. Now, when it comes to hull hatches, door hatches, fission ports, I just want to stick with the standards because I simply don't have any others. Save this, and now we have a draft. This means the thing is ready for engineering, but it's not yet complete. So assign your engineers, and in 10 days, we'll be able to get this thing completed. Then it's going to go back into the design. Now, while you're waiting for this, um, don't stick around and just skip time, because that would be a waste of a good 10 days. We're also going to add the engineering bureau, sorry, the research bureau, and get some additional work done here. At the moment, we have three different tiers, or sorry, three different tech trees. You've got structure, firepower, and mobility. Structure is things like armor, researching additional hulls, getting additional sponsons for the tanks, so that's where you can park either machine guns or guns, or sometimes even both in the combo. Firepower is everything that has to do with both the hard firepower, so the hard firepower stat, as well as the, let's say, soft stat, the machine guns. I can highly recommend the Vickers, although it is slightly farther down the tech tree. Mobility, everything engines and tracks, as well as the type of octane that you put in here, the type of petrol. The lowest is 45, the highest is 55. It gives some mobility stats to your tank, so operational range increases. In this case, what tends to do quite well is RHA steel. This is rolled homogeneous armor. It is going to be making your tank a bit heavier as compared to the 
let's say 500 mass that the raw iron has, but this does provide a lot more protection. And some of the clients really like a well-protected tank. So I'm going to be researching this, click start, and you're off to the races. Now there are, again, a lot of upgrades that you might want to get for these buildings. But considering that right now I have to pay a lot of people quite a bit of money and do building maintenance, I don't want to spend that much. A building up there that you might want to get eventually is the ergonomics office. This is going to allow you to add 10 additional engineers to a research line. And with that, you'll be able to get your research done quite a bit faster. In case you're wondering how to get additional research lines, well, in the current version of the Earl Access, uh, and this is being recorded on February 7th, 2024, you simply don't get access to that. We don't have to worry about additional research lines. So for now, I'm not going to do much with these additional buildings yet. Production hall is going to remain empty. Warehouse will be fine with the amount of resources that we have right now. You got the resources listed up here. A couple of these are simply not available yet. Rare metals, ceramics, plastics, composites. You don't have those. We don't know what those are. We don't have the type of armor that needs them. And with the available resources, we can just build tanks as we see fit. Unfortunately, we still have to wait 10 days. Now I'm going to skip it 10 times. And yes, you're going to get quite a few pop-ups. I just tend to ignore those. After five days, yep, yep, yep. After a couple of days, there we go. We got the design completed. Or sorry, the engineering completed. So we're going to go back over to the tank design. And now we have this new hull. The Mark 1, Mark 2. Yeah, it's only going to get crazier from here. You can, if you want to, do an overhaul of your engine. But seeing as you only have one engine available, you won't have additional parts. So just skip that for now. When it comes to sponsons, you can see that they're in a sort of blueprinty texture. We don't have them yet. We need to engineer them. So let's get that done. Again, there is not a whole lot to upgrade. Although if you do wait a little bit, you might be able to upgrade that alloy type with the new armor. The problem is that's going to take about 30 days and I want to get this tank out the door as quickly as possible. So we're first going to have to do with the parts that we have. So make sure you assign the engineers in the engineering department. Five more days and we should be good. The buildings such as the design bureau and the engineering bureau also get the ergonomics office. So again, you can assign 10 additional people over there. But for now, I simply don't really have the funds to do that. So I'm not going to waste additional money spending on both getting the buildings and getting the people to staff the buildings up until the point where we have a couple of clients. It is nice to get those upgrades, but right now I can't quite afford them. Now that we have the male sponsor engineered, we can add this to the tank, both sides. I'm not sure why the game created all these additional drafts, just don't mind those. Make sure you click the completed one, that's the one you have completed in engineering. Now we're going to add some guns, we're going to make sure that these guns have staff. Over on the right hand side you got the commander, you got the driver, the gunner, the loader, and the mechanic. All of these need to get the points attributed to them that they require. Unfortunately, that isn't always possible. In this particular tank, we can only have one commander, as indicated by this guy with the binoculars. Some tanks can have multiple commander slots, but this one sadly not. Next up, we're going to have a driver, we're going to have a couple of gunners, we're going to make sure that these guns get loaded by two loaders, and then we're going to have a couple of mechanics. Unfortunately, the more people you stuff into this tank, the less your crew stats become. Now, you can't exactly run with less than half of the points. The game is not going to allow you to do that. But you can do it with, let's say, 80%. So 8 out of 10 mechanic points will work. Then we're going to add some expendables, aka ammunition. You got HE. Make sure you do click through some of these other slots because some of them are additional types of ammo. Ammo is standard for the machine guns. And then we're going to have the uh, petrol 45 for the fuel. If you have additional shells researched at some point, such as the AP shell or maybe the improved HE shell, you can add those to the tank. But keep in mind, everything you add, adds weight. And some clients like their tanks light. Whether or not you paint the tank is entirely up to you. It is very much a cosmetic part of the tank. Some people really love it, some people uh, don't really care. And as far as I've been able to tell, your clients just don't really care. With that, we have our tank design ready. However, we just need to get these guys to actually design it. This is like our prototype. 
So 34 days from now, we'll have this thing designed. It's going to take our 30 engineers. And with that, we'll have to be a little patient. So now you're going to be spending a couple of days waiting. A contract might pop up. If it does, just for the moment, ignore it. Because you don't really have a design that you can offer. There we go. We got RHA Steel researched. Let's go over to the research line and get something else that can quickly improve our tanks. I wouldn't directly recommend going for the medium hull. Because the medium hull does give you a couple of additional parts. But it is just the hull. The problem is that if you want to make this medium hull work, you're also going to have to get some additional parts like better engines, better tracks, maybe different firepower. What can upgrade my tank right now is the light side fed machine gun. So the Hotchkiss 1909. This is what I want to research. It's going to take 15 days, which kind of coincides with the time that I still have left on the design. Unfortunately, this does mean that the tank as it is, is not going to benefit from this new design or from this new machine gun, nor from the RHA steel that I have researched. We do have sometimes a new administrator popping up. These administrators can be hired in the admin building. And over here, they can give you all sorts of different bonuses. Mr. Tritton over here is optimal for either the production, so that's the workshop of the factory, or going into the resource storage. If you put them to work in the factory, so let's say the workshop, and this is what I really recommend, you're going to get a man hour cost reduction. So it won't take nearly as long to build tanks. It's also going to allow him to get 50 more workers on a line, which means you'll build tanks faster. And that's going to be very useful if you want to cram additional contracts in. Delivery time focus is reduced by 10% and same for getting additional resources if you stuff him into the warehouse. I'm going to get this guy and I'm going to put him to work in five days in the factory hall. Until such a time, we'll just have to wait. Don't forget the engineering bureau. Yes, yes, yes. We got all this. Administrator has arrived. Let's go to the production hall. Click over here. Set the admin. And the guy is going to be working his ass off for you here. Unfortunately, right now, there is not that much to work on. Because as it happens, we don't actually have the tank yet. Six days from now, that's going to change. Ah, the side fed machine gun is done. So now we have basically two upgrades ready to go. That is very nice to have. The last thing that I want to get is a better engine, because that can also be used to improve the tank as we have it. So that's the twin engine. It's going to take 20 days. And with that, it's going to be probably the second iteration of the tank that gets all of these benefits. Now, I can already get the engineers to start working on the better version of this new tank. So the Mark 1, Mark 2 hull, now Mark 1, Mark 3, can be upgraded with the RHA steel. We're going to have a couple of different variants of this tank. As for the rest, well, we don't exactly have any new parts researched. We did get the machine gun, of course, but beyond that, not much. So these guys are going to be working on this. And I do need 20 engineers. Why can I not assign them? Well, they're all busy, unfortunately. They're all busy. We have 30 guys working on the designs and 20 working on the research bureau. When it comes to engineers, I do recommend hiring a couple of additional guys. Because at the moment, I can hire additional ones and they are not that cheap and they tend to earn themselves back pretty quick. So we're going to go over to the admin building and we're going to hire a couple of additional engineers. You can see that I have 50 out of 90. I can put more of them to work, but uh, I just want to hire the additional 20 to work on the tank. Somehow, these guys just instantly spawn on your premises, and that is very nice because that means I can instantly get the engineering department to go to work. So in 12 days, we'll have a new version of this tank. I'm not sure exactly why this thing decided to start adding the cope cage because this is the tank that I want to engineer. I don't want to have uh, the cage on top. I don't want to have the wheels on the back. We're just going to have this better hull available. Now, there we go. Rival tanks design rumors. This is not something I'm going to address right now. We do have the Mark 1, Mark 1 complete. What I'm going to do now is get this thing through the proving grounds. Because with this, your tank is going to get tested. And as you can see right now, it has negative fame. Why is that? Well... This thing is not without flaws. 
Uh, there are some blocked vision ports. There are some blocked evacuation paths, which I'm sure the crew won't like. So get this thing tested. With basic trials, it's going to cost you 9k. It's going to take a couple of days. But you'll be able to iron out all of these, uh, let's say, growing pains of a tank. In the meanwhile, the design bureau can start working on a different tank. But I don't really want it to. Because at the moment, there isn't that much more to design. Yes, I have the new uh, additional machine guns and the new engines coming up. But for now, I don't have that new basic hull. So I'm going to wait with the engineering, sorry, with the design department. A couple of days and we have the Mark 1, Mark 3 engineering complete. Now, what I can also start working on, potentially, if you would want to, is an alteration of the Lewis machine gun. At the moment, I don't really care because I have access to the Hotchkiss. And seeing as this is, let's say, the new version of the gun that I'm going to be using, I don't need to work on it because it automatically comes with the best parts. It comes with the Mark IIs and that's currently the best I have, except for the magazine. So let's make sure that this thing is going to use the magazine Mark IV. In order to do that, make a clone, make sure that you have a draft, and then we can add this Mark IV magazine and we can add the stock as required. This is going to take two days. It is just doing a bit of engineering on a machine gun and it's going to make this gun a bit more potent. How much more potent? Well, anti-ricochet and damage goes up by one whole point. But at this point in time, my engineers in the engineering department don't, don't really have anything to do. Might as well put them to work. A few days later, the Proving Grounds is completing with the tests. They're done. Excellent. Let's head into the design bureau and fix up that tank. Now, I know that I have pretty much already completed a new design, or at least a new iteration of this tank. But this is the one that I have ready for clients. So I'm going to start fixing all of these issues. And in order to do that, click on the exclamation mark and just click amend. They tend to be very cheap and you do want to get as much fame for your tank as possible. Just fix all of these little bugs with your tank. They're going to get some very slight stat improvements every now and then. And with that, you're going to make sure that the tank has no debuffs, if you will. Okay, that's done. Now we're going to head over to the production. But we don't have a contract you might argue. True, we don't have a contract, but I'm expecting this thing to make it through. So we're going to start building a couple of these tanks. Uh, for what potential client? I don't know. Somebody will eventually come, so don't worry about that. Let's say I want to have about 20 of these tanks, because most of the time that's about the number of tanks that you're going to be required to get. As the amount of staff currently is, I got 240. I can 350, so I can have a lot more, but expenses. Workers tend to cost money, but thankfully they don't cost that much money. So right now, if I want to get 20 tanks, that would take me about two months. That's quite long. I want to get a couple of additional workers. So over to the admin building and get some additional workers. Make sure you use this slider on the right, not the slider on the left, or you'll be firing people. I want to start hiring people. So we're going to hire 110 additional people. Yes, I want to hire them. And now if I go back to production, you'll see that this number is going to go down quite a bit. Um, I can assign all the additional workers here. Now it's going to take only 40 days. So that's a nice bonus. So now we'll have a tank ready, eventually. All that we need now is a contract. As we're waiting for a contract, you can already start working on your next tank. I now have the twin engine available, so we're going to make a new iteration of this Mark 1, uh, Mark 1 tank. So I'm going to copy this one. I'm going to say I want to have that better hull, the one that we already created, the Mark 1, Mark 3. You can see that it is slightly heavier. I'm going to put that different engine in. And with this, we're going to have to create a new draft because we don't have this thing actually built yet. The Centipede Mark 1 has not received any upgrades. The gun has not received any upgrades, but I do want to have this newer machine gun in the front. So all we need to do, engineer the power unit and make sure that this thing gets some going. Um, again, you got mostly the upgraded parts. Later on in your career, if you're going to get more parts from reverse engineering or from other nations, you're going to be able to mix and match. But right now, this is what we have. Assign this. Five days from now, we'll have a working engine. Don't ask me how it works. These engineers are miracle workers. 
There we go. Taylor twin engine ready. Go back to designs. Get this thing engineered. 33 days from now, we'll have an upgraded version of our tank. Um, how upgraded, you might ask? Well, somewhat. Like, it's not going to really win any prizes, but if I compare and contrast the Mark 1 with, let's say, uh, the Mark... I'm going to call this the Mark 1 Mark 2, because the tank is called the Mark 1, but this is, or actually, let's say Mod 2, second modification, because this is a bit easier to discern. Um, if you look over to the right, we're going to have some ability stat, and with that different engine, you can see some of these stats, such as road speed, has more than twice improved. So we're going from 6 to 13. Cross-country speed, 8 to 14. That newer engine is going to give me a lot of punch. Protection? Yeah, there's quite a bit there. We did get the additional armor. Unfortunately, right now, it doesn't really show you that, which kind of surprises me because... Oh, here it is. Kinetic resistance is 24 as opposed to 14, and it is uh, 11 shock resistance as opposed to 6. So yeah, you're getting some slightly better protection. Again, you might not sell this tank right away, but you will at some point be able to start getting more designs out. This tank is slightly lighter, has more firepower, and um, is actually slightly cheaper to build than the previous iteration that we've had. So it's already a better tank. We just need some time. At some point, you will get this pop-up. A Empire, usually it's the British, they want to get some tanks. As it happens, we're already well on our way to building additional ones. So, these 20 tanks is something that we should be able to provide pretty quickly. What do they want for this tank? And how well are we going to be able to provide? Right now, it's pretty straightforward. We've only got one tank on offer. We've only got one design. So there's not a whole lot that the British can pick from. What you can currently see is the competitor offer. We know that they have the Hector Mark 1, but we don't know anything else. You can buy insights on this tank for 81,000. That is quite a chunk change out of your budget. Generally, I find that the success score, if you are around 415, is safe. Now, you can do that by just dropping down your price, just making your tank cheaper. That's a pretty easy way to go, but, well, we're here to make money, right? And this tank, right now, is costing me 14k to build. If you look at selling this thing for 18k, that's unacceptable. So what I can do is say that I can offer this tank to them faster, because I already started production on them. Keep in mind, you might be able to build a tank, but you also have to ship it. And that tends to take time. It's not like you snap your fingers and the tanks respawn in the, uh, let's say, the client's location, unfortunately. I need about 20 more days, but um, that should be fine. That should be about, let's say, 7th of October. Then I'm going to take about two weeks, and that should be just enough margin. So let's say about the 23rd. And you sometimes can speed this up a little bit. I'm going to reduce the price just a touch, let's say 415 there. And I stand to make half a million from this contract, which will just about double my bank account as it stands. Now, if you do feel a little unsafe, you can get this insight, but it is pretty expensive. That's 81 grand that you're spending on that. So for now, I'm going to say this is my success score. This is what I'm going to go with. If I don't get the contract, we'll just have to wait for another one. So let's get that. Make sure that uh, you wait a bit, and they accepted. Excellent. Excellent. Now in 15 days, that tank's gonna be complete. They have eight days, sorry, they have 15 days to complete eight more tanks. Now that I know that I have a bit of additional money coming in, i.e. half a million, now I'm gonna crank up the production. So now I'm gonna build the ergonomics office, which will house an additional 100 people per line. It's gonna take two months, it's gonna take 90,000, it's an investment in the future, because the faster you can build tanks, the more money you stand to make. A couple of days later, all the tanks are complete. How many tanks you have, you can see over here in the middle. It's going to say the amount of stored tanks. The Mark 1, Mark 1, 20 of them. Head over to the warehouse and either scroll all the way down until you go to delivery lines, or click this button over here. Warehouse, tanks, storage. With this, we can start shipping this tank. It's going to be required... 
by the contract. They need to get 20 of them. This is going to get shipped to the client. How long that's going to take depends on what contractor you pick, what logistics company. Which logistics company you pick tends to really rely upon your contracts. Because right now I need to get this thing there in 11 days. That is a very short time span. So I'm going to be paying a pretty premium um, in order to get there. What I can go for is Shively Transport. It's going to take five days with a possible delay of seven, which would make it too late. Or I can go for these guys, Smith Services, a high speed delivery or at least high security delivery, nine days, which would be in time with a high safety and a slight chance of three days delay. So again, I'm slightly too eager on this contract. The William and Partners is too slow. Um, the Ryder & Co is too unsafe for me because it has low availability or low reliability. So I'm gonna go with the safest option. And this is where it gets a little exciting because if this does not work, I'm going to get fined 20 times for tanks that I failed to deliver. That is going to be unfortunate. So let's hope this goes through. Now that I do have some money coming in, and right now it doesn't say so, but it is predicting that I do not make on the contract, so I'm going to be negative. Uh, I'm going to say, nope, it's going to be fine. I'll actually be okay. I'm going to start getting an upgrade for the warehouse, which is going to be potentially this one, if you want to get faster tank reliability. Um, sorry, that's the. Uh, this is the reduction of tank delivery time, the loading speed stations, the loading safety reduces that reliability issue. So I'm going to get this one. It's going to cost me 90k. Um, this is pretty much a make it or break it moment. Either I make these tanks and deliver them on time or I'm fucked um, and the whole campaign is a bust. It's pretty high stakes early game. Now, the Design Bureau has completed that new tank. So with that, we can already start getting a better tank out there. But again, you might want to put it through the proving grounds just to make sure that it actually does what is advertised. Get all of those flaws out. So once again, proving grounds, get the tank. It's going to cost you 7k. It's really not that much. Get that done. And now hope that we deliver them in time. And we do. Complete it. And all of a sudden you're sitting on 750 or 705.51k. So we've made some money. This is pretty much the loop of Tank Tycoon. Research better stuff, design better stuff, engineer the parts for your better designs, test them in the proving grounds, and ideally start building tanks before you need to ship them. Because the faster you can get them out there, the more money you stand to make. I hope this little tutorial was useful. If you have any questions, by all means, let me know down below in the comments and I'll try to answer them as best as possible. It is possible that this tutorial is going to be outdated in a couple of months as the amount of stuff that gets added to the game uh, supersedes this. If it does, I will upgrade the, or I'll upgrade the tutorial at some point. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you soon for more.